Hey fellow problem solvers, Colfax Math here. Today we're going to do a video on statistics. This is a, for an IV math class, for any standardized test. Um, stats comes up in everywhere from Algebra 1, Algebra 2. You see a lot of stats. So I'm going to start easy and then kind of build on it. Might be a little bit of a longer video. So let's say I'm talking about shoe sizes in the U.S. and I have five sizes. And I just randomly sample them. I have seven, eight, another eight, a 10, and 11. So those are my five shoe sizes. Pretty small sample, and I want to find the average. Another word for the average is the mean. Notation for mean is x bar. That means the average. It means the same thing. And the definition of that is you add, that's the Greek letter sigma, meaning add the whole column up, add all of your x values, divide by the number of values. So if I want to find the average of this set of data, I'll go 7 plus 8, 15, plus 8, 23, plus 10, 33, plus 11, 44. So the sum of my values is 44 divided by n, the number of values, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 44 divided by 5, that would be my average. Uh, 5 goes into 48 times with 4 left over, so 8.8 .8 is my average Q size. Next we have median. The median is the middle number. I put them in order, so I go in increasing order. The middle number, if I have an odd number of values, will be this one here. So the middle number in this case is 8, and that's my median. If I had an even number of values, I would average the two middle ones. The mode is the most frequent value, the one that shows itself most often, so the most frequent. So I look up here, I have one value of 7, two values of 8, one value of 10, one value of 11. So the mode is also 8 because I have two values of that. So that's the mean, median, mode. Uh, next, we're going to look at a lot more data and put it together in a frequency distribution. All right, let's say I have a class of 30 students and I sample or I check everybody's shoe size and I get this long list of 30 numbers. I put them all in order from least to greatest. Somebody has a six, another person has a six, three people have a seven, seven people have eights, but I don't want to write out all 30 numbers. That's why I create a frequency distribution. X is the actual shoe size. Y, F of X, the frequency, is how often it occurs. So I got two sixes. I say I have two sixes. I have three sevens, so I'm saying I have three sevens. I have seven eights eight nines, and so forth. I add all this up, I have 30 total values. That's my number n. We're going to find the mean, median, mode for this set of data as well. So the mode is going to be the easiest to find. The mode is the one that appears most frequently. So the mode is going to be, I have eight values of nine, so the most frequent value, the mode, is 9. So the mode's equal to 9. Really easy to do that on a frequency distribution. To find the, the mean, the average, remember that average is equal to the sum of all the values, sigma x, divided by the number of values, 30 in this case. So I could go 6 plus 6 plus 7 plus 7, right? I could add all 30 of those values together. Or I could just create a new column, x times the frequency, and then I could add that column up. So 6 times 2 is 12, 21, 56, 72, 50, 33, 24. I'm going to add that up. I did that on my calculator, and I get 268. This 268 right here is the sum of all my values, right? I added up all 30 values and got 268. So my average x bar for the set of 30 data points is the 268 divided by the number of values 30. <clears throat> I did that on my calculator 
and I got 8.93. So there's my average. My mode is 9. And then I got to find my um, median, my middle value. So if I have an even number of values, it's going to be my 15th and 16th value. This is actually a little difficult. Um, I don't know why, maybe it's intuitive. But I'm going to create a new column called cumulative frequency. Okay, so I'm creating a new column, cumulative frequency. And what I'm saying is that 6 is my first and second value, right? This is my first spot, my second spot, my third spot, my fourth spot, my fifth spot, third spot, sixth, seventh, eighth, and so on, up to 30. So this is my first and second value. My seven is going to be my third value, fourth and fifth value. So this is my third through fifth, right? It's inclusive of three, four, and five. So that's where I get the three values from. Now here, my eight, I have seven of those. I go up one number here, six, six plus seven, 13 minus one. So this is my six through 12th value, and there are seven of those, right? Because it's my sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, that's where the seven values come from. This is my thirteenth through plus eight, twenty-one minus one, twenty. This is my twenty-first plus five minus one. This is my twenty-sixth value plus three minus one. So 26 plus 3, 29 minus 1, 28. And this is going to be my 29th and 30th value. So there's my cumulative frequency column. To find the median, we said we want the 15th and 16th value. I could see 15th and 16th is in this window here. And that's going to be a 9, right? So the median here is equal to 9. Um, so we have a mean of 8.9, a mode of 9, and a median of 9. They, they all kind of mean different things. You're always kind of, I mean, as you're thinking about shoe sizes, you'd expect the middle will be, you know, somewhere in there, the average to be that, and also the most common. Okay, the next thing you usually do is create what's called a histogram. You use a bar chart for discrete data when they're integers. So a bar chart might be better for this, but I'm going to show you a histogram. A histogram is going to be the frequency it occurs on the vertical axis and x on the horizontal axis. How far I go up. So I have two sizes of six. I have three sizes of seven. Then I can move to eight. I have seven sizes of eight. A nine, I have eight values. A nine, so that goes up to eight. Ten, I'm going back down. I have five values of ten. I have three values of eleven. And then I have two values of 12. So this is my histogram right here. If I could create a bell curve up and over here, and it starts to approximate a bell curve with a clear center and outliers on both sides, this is called a normal distribution. And if it's not normal like that, it could be either skewed to the left or skewed to the right. And that's referred to as positive or negative skewing meaning that you know, even though my average might be whatever it is, 8.9, if I had a lot more values down here, it would be skewed in that direction. OK, I think I'm going to wrap that up here. We've gone over mean, median, mode, frequency distribution, histogram, normal distribution. And I think in the next video, I'll go over variance and standard deviation.